What we'll be showing you during this video, we will take the layout from the last video and create two new centerpieces. We will also show you how to create basic tooling for the second layout. This is the layout that we ended up with at the end of our last video for our fall door sign. Now this would look great uh, hanging outside your door of your home or maybe on your dining room wall or maybe even for a, a fall wedding. It would be beautiful. But we think that we'd like to also use it for a candle holder for the center of your fall table setting. Um, so let's go ahead and quickly hack in some sockets, candle sockets from one of our other projects. And you can see exactly how easy it is to convert this into a whole other use or for a whole other use. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to go in and delete out some of these models that we don't need. So we're going to double click on the ribbon and press delete on our keyboard. We're going to go over to our 2D view and we're going to delete the welcome text vectors that we have here. And we're also going to delete the, uh, the outline that we had created before for the profile cut. So we're going to delete that as well. Let's go back to our 3D view. Now, one of our projects that we have on our site is the Home for the Holidays number two. And what it is, is it's a uh, selection of models that will help you build a candle holder. And there's a square socket and a round socket and some extra add-ons that you can add on to make it a little bit more interesting by adding V-carving or adding some holly leaves. And also it comes with a video and a special project sheet that shows you how to size the, the socket to fit different sized candles. So if you watch the video, it'll instruct you on how to size the socket for an odd shaped candle but also we've gone and given you the information to size your socket for pretty standard sized candles so that's great information to have and if you do purchase that project you might want to download that content and watch that video so we're going to go ahead and minimize that again and we're going to flip over to our clip art tab we're going to go to our design and make library of projects we're going to find our home for the holidays number two and we're quickly going to go ahead and double click on the round trivet and what that's going to do is going to put that trivet right in the center of our workspace because we double clicked on it and now obviously that's not the best spot for it because we've got the pumpkin and the wheat in the way so we're going to um, first of all size it and then we're going to put the socket where it belongs on our wreath and then we're going to go ahead and change the shape height and base height so that it rises above our wreath here. So just go ahead to our drawing tab and we're gonna set our size to be 4.38. And this will accommodate a two inch round pillar candle. So we're gonna hit apply, close that. And now we're gonna go ahead and move that up over top of our wreath. So to do that, we're going to use our move selected objects and we're going to move this to a relative position from our center point up six inches and we're going to hit apply. And then we're going to go ahead and change the shape height and base height of that so it'll raise above our wreath. We're going to change the 0.5 and our base height is going to be 0.5 and we're going to go ahead and fix that and that looks great so it's raising up just slightly above our the leaves on our wreath uh, don't worry about the leaves showing through the center of the candle um, this height is perfect because this rim actually raises uh, when you put the candle in there it'll sit right up right above the leaves so it's perfect now we're going to go ahead and use the create circular array of copies so we're going to copy this around the outside of this wreath four times so we're not going to change the size of the selected object. We're going to make sure the center is set to zero, zero, and the number of copies is four, and we're going to rotate it all around 360 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and press copy. And after a few seconds of work, it will copy that around the outside of your wreath. We'll close that down and we'll deselect everything. And there we have a nice looking centerpiece for the center of your, of your table. Very easy and quick to do. Now to make it even better, let's take out the center uh, motif and add in a larger pillar candle in the center. And this would be great again for maybe the, uh, the center of your Thanksgiving dinner. So we're quickly gonna 
double click on the pumpkin and delete it, double click on the wheat, delete those, double click on the hammer texture, we're going to delete that. And we're going to go over to our clip art tab and we're going to bring in a, another round trivet. It's going to pop right in the center. And we need to size it to the right size to fit a, th a three and three quarter inch pillar candle. So we're going to go up here and we're going to set our size to be 8.15 and we're going to click apply or close that down and now we'd like to, to, to change the shape height and base height so it raises up above the wreath again so look straight down on that we're going to bring up our floating properties and we're going to change this to be 0.75 and 0.6 oh too many points in there 0.6 spacebar we're going to hit close and there we have it to accommodate a much larger candle in the center. Now to jazz it up a little bit, let's go back to our clip art tab. And let's bring in this round ribbon. So we're going to double click on that. And we're going to place that right on top of this trivet. Now right now, the combine mode is set to merge. So we have a couple different ways we can, we can change this to be add. We can go into our floating properties bar and click add. Or we can go over to our modeling tab, find this ribbon here, the round ribbon in our component tree, right click on it, combine mode, and we can make that add, or we can go to our spanner here and change this to add. So this time around, we're gonna use the right click method, combine mode, we're gonna add that. And that's great, except for it's not sized quite right because it's starting to raise, uh, adding to the inside rim of this, and so we don't want that. So let's just go ahead and dynamically size that to fit inside that recess. We're just going to scale that up. That looks perfect. Now to save a little bit of time, I've gone ahead and created some V carving um, text to put on this ahead of time. So we're going to go to file, import, import in vectors. We're going to go ahead and grab this bit of text. And there we have, we have family, laughter, food, and of course, my favorite part of Thanksgiving, leftovers. And there we have a nice layout. Now, of course, you can't see that text uh, on there. So let's go ahead and create some basic tooling for this so we can take a look and see what it's going to look like when it's all done. So let's just go ahead and flip back to our 2D view. Now, we're going to need to get an outline vector of this to do our tooling with. So let's go over to our, oh, I guess we're already on our modeling tab, so that's perfect. We're going to select all of the models that make the outside border of this by holding down the shift key and clicking on each one. We're gonna go ahead and create a vector boundary from selected components. We're gonna unclick everything. And we're gonna click that vector. Now it's grouped it together for us, the inside and the outside. So we're gonna right click on that, ungroup, back to original layers. And then we're gonna delete this inside one because we really don't need that anymore. Let's just go ahead now to our drawing tab and we are gonna tile our 2D and our 3D view. And then we're gonna go ahead and press F12 on the keyboard to bring up our tool pass tab. Let's set up our material. Now, the last time we set up the material for the sign, uh, for the fall door sign, one inch was gonna be enough to accommodate our, um, our model. But in this case, it's not gonna be. So we need to go ahead and change the thickness of this to be one. Point 0.5 and you'll see that uh, when we did that a minute ago when it was only at one there was an error here error model thickness exceeds the material thickness so we need to change that to be 1.5 our datum is set to the center we're going to have our um, model is our model is pushed right to the very top of our material and our gap is going to be below the model And the rest of the information is all set up based on your machine. We're going to click OK. And because we had have we have some tool paths left from our last sign, these are it's going to say there's some errors. So that's okay. We're going to reuse these tool paths. We're just going to calculate new ones based on some new new vectors. So we're going to click OK. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to instead of creating a brand new roughing pass, we're going to double click on our old roughing pass, and we're going to make sure that we select this outside vector. And we're going to use all the same settings. Nothing's going to change. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to calculate that. And we're going to preview that. 
like we said before, we should always preview our toolpath. If it doesn't look right after the preview, then the chances are pretty good it's not going to look okay on your machine. So there we have a nice preview of the roughing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our finishing pass. We're going to use this new vector. We're going to use the ball nose, selected vector, sorry, sorry the 1 8 inch ball nose. We're going to use selected vector. The boundary is going to be set to a quarter inch, and it depends on whatever. We're going to use the offset um, strategy, so it's going to start in the middle and it's going to work its way out. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that. It's going to take a minute again because the um, there's quite a detailed piece. Um, if you chose to use smaller sockets, maybe for more of a standard three-quarter inch um, tapered candle for the outside sockets and a smaller one for the center, then of course your overall project would be smaller and it would take less time to machine. So that might be something to consider when you're creating something like this. When it comes back up again, we're going to preview that. There we go. This kind of should clean up quite nicely. Looks great. So let's close that and let's go ahead to our V carving. Now we have to go and reselect all of our vectors and for our V carving. And when I brought these in, it it broke them all apart on me. So I need to select them all by holding down the shift key and dragging my bounding box around it. We're going to use a 60 degree uh, V bit. Make sure that we have it projected onto our onto our model, which is set up like that from before, so we're going to calculate that. Let's preview that toolpath. That uh, looks great. And now let's just go ahead and do our last toolpath, which is going to be our profile cut. And so we're going to select this, the outside vector, and we need to change some numbers here. So we're going to change this to be, we're going to need to go through our material by 0.15. So this plus whatever goes in here needs to equal our one and a half inches. So that's going to be 1.1, oh. oh, sorry, 1.3, 1 1.3, 1 3, 3, 5, sorry, 1.35, there we go, <laughs> math is a little rough. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and use that end mill, that looks great, so we're going to actually add some tabs this time. We're going to add it in four tabs. We're going to add our tabs. And we're going to make sure those tabs are placed somewhere again conveniently that they can be easily cut off. And luckily, we can just position them around those sockets. We're going to close that down. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And we're going to preview that visible tool path. And there we go. We've cut right through. And that looks like a great looking centerpiece once you pull this off your machine and take it over to your bandsaw and cut off those tabs. That would be pretty nice in the middle of your Thanksgiving meal. Important note, if you plan to create tooling and run it on your CNC, make sure that you use values for the material setup and for the parameters of each toolpath that are safe and appropriate for your CNC machine, the tooling you have available, and whatever material you are planning to use for your project. What you just saw in a nutshell, we took the layout from the last video and hacked in four two-inch pillar candle holders. We hacked it a second time by adding in a larger pillar candle holder and a new ribbon. We imported in pre-formatted text for v-carving, created basic tooling, and it's important to note the extra content that's available for the Home for the Holidays number two project.